Okay, so what I'm going to show you is basically your way around the interface. So you know where to go, how to use the software, and create, start creating things. So when you load up the software, you'll be greeted with this screen. It basically shows you all of your recent models that you've worked on. So it's just basically a bunch of shortcuts that you can click on and quickly open up your recent models. You also have new model, open a model, some options. So if you ever want to dig into any of the options of Maker, you can click on there. And then it allows you to turn certain things on or off. You can, for instance, make the lines thicker. It's entirely up to you. And you also have help, which I would recommend taking a look at. It basically covers everything that's in the software. And if you're stuck with a certain feature or tool, it will be covered in there and explain to you how to actually use it. Okay, so let's make a new model. When you click on new model, it will display the new model dialog box. So this basically is just basically setting up your sheet or your model size. So dimensions, you've got a width in X and a height in Y. Now, if I were to change one of these, let's say I change that to 24 inches, it gives me a real-time preview on the left-hand side, which is in white. Now, you'll notice that on the left-hand side of that preview, the bottom left-hand side, you can see that I've got this red area. This denotes the origin point or the datum point. If I want to move that, click on any of the four corners, or you can click on the center. For the purpose of this example, just going to click on the bottom left. Now the resolution basically is for 3D work. So if you're not doing any 3D work, I wouldn't really worry about it too much. The only thing that it will make a difference in is when you simulate the toolpath. So when you go to simulate, if the resolution is quite low, because it uses basically a 3D block of material to machine it. So if the resolution is quite low, it will basically give you jagged lines in the simulation. Now that's just the simulation. If you're actually machining to lines, it will follow those lines that you've created and not be all jagged. So don't worry about that too much. If you are bringing in 3D work or you're using, say, reliefs, reliefs are basically 3D pieces. So if you're using reliefs, I would probably crank this up to the maximum in this version. As long as you have a half-decent computer, it's not going to make much difference. So I would just leave that at the, at the maximum. Units, obviously whatever units of measurement you want to work in. So you've got millimeters or inches. I'll select inches for this, and then I'm just going to select okay. And what it will do, it will take me into the interface of Carve Code Maker. Okay, so you'll be greeted with this screen. You'll see that you get this yellow rectangle or square dependent on how you've set up your model. And this is basically placed me in the 3D view. Now it's entirely up to you. You can do your designs in the 3D view or the 2D view. Even if you're just creating lines and circles, it doesn't matter if you do those in the 3D view. If you do them in either view, it doesn't matter. Okay. Right, so let's take a look at all of the icons first. So then the left-hand side down here are the vector creation tools. Now, when I say vector creation, I basically mean creating lines, circles, or text, for instance. So anytime that you hear me say vectors, I basically mean lines, circles, etc. Below that, 
there are better editing tools. Okay, so it allows you to trim or cut, allows you to offset, create radius corners, and allows you to join the ends. Now, there are some other vector tools which are located at the top here. So you've got a, a few more at the top here. And then next to that, you've got relief editing tools. So these are if you want to edit any 3D work that you bring in. And then next to that, we've got a few tool paths. Now, all of these will be located on the drop down menus. And the drop down menus will actually have a few more options than what you can see as icons. So if I click vector, and then let's say, for instance, I go to align, and you can see that this allows you to basically align certain vectors up. So let's say that you wanted a vector to be in the center of another vector, then you would use this tool. Now you can see that that tool is not on the toolbar. So you'd have to come to the vector dropdown, come down to a line and then select it on there. If this was a tool that you were using quite often, you can actually create your own custom toolbars. Okay, but we'll deal with that in a later video. Okay, so all of the icons are available as a drop down here. You've also got a relief clip art library. Now, the relief clip art library is basically a repository of 3D work that you have when you purchase Maker or any of the other Craft Code products. Now, to get that working, what you would normally do is select the folder there with the yellow star. Now, here you can see I've already got this installed. So I'll show you how you can install it. Now, if you haven't got this installed, it should come up with a, a link allowing you to just basically click on it and then go to the Carve Co website and download it and just install it. Now, when you have it installed, you can see that I've got these animals. Click on the drop down, let's say crosses there. Let's take a look at greenery. You can see all of the reliefs that are available. And I can just grab these, drop them into Maker. So just drop them onto that yellow area that you can see. Now there's no limitation to this. You can just grab them, drop them in, paste them down, and then at its most basic form, just machine them. Now to get the clip art, if I click get more clip art here, this will open up the Carveco website. Okay, and there you can see I can download the Relief Clip Art Library. So basically just download that, install it. Next time that you start Carveco Maker, it will be shown within the software. Let's close that. So let's take a look on the right hand side now. So if I take a look down the bottom here, you can see that I've got something called model information. So it tells me the size in X and Y. And if I have a 3D piece in there, it also tells me the height. It also tells me the pixel resolution that I'm using. But as I said, it's not really too important if you're doing 2D or 2.5D cutouts. Now, if I click on vectors there, you get something called vector layers. So if I click on the arrow there, it opens it up. Now this basically allows you to create vector layers. Now these are quite useful, whereas you can assign certain vectors or lines to certain layers. And then those layers can be colored in different colors. You can turn them on or off. But what's really useful is that you can actually machine to them. Okay, so it allows you to quickly select a lot of vectors for machining. Bitmaps basically display, if you've imported an image, it will be displayed in there. Now, the one thing that you'll probably use quite often is toolpaths. So once you finish your design, click on toolpaths, 
and then that opens up all of the tool paths down the bottom right hand side so you've got all the toolpath operations you've got 2d toolpaths 3d toolpaths and then the simulation now at any time you can switch between either of these if i want to go back to see what the model size is for instance i can click there on untitled and it displays the model information go back to toolpaths just click on it there and it opens up the toolpaths for me now I'm just going to explain the different views. Now, just because we're in the 3D view doesn't mean that I can't create 2D work in there. So if I wanted to, I could create all my lines, all my circles in here, and then just machine it. It's entirely up to you if you want to use the 3D view or the 2D view. Now to toggle between the 2D view and the 3D view, if you just click these tabs here, and it will go between the 2D view and the 3D view. Now it's quite easy to see whether you're in the 3D view because it will have this yellow model. The 2D view will normally have a white model. Now to move this around, left and right mouse click together, and then you can pan around. If you want to zoom into an area, basically just use the middle mouse button to scroll the wheel and it will zoom into whatever area you have the mouse pointer. There's also some options here, so you can scale to fit model, so it will go back to the actual size. Or like I do, you could just use the scroll the wheel and then just zoom back out. Okay, so those are the only options in the 2d view the 3d view is pretty much the same so left and right move around like so zoom in it will zoom in again on the maze pointer let's just zoom out now the difference is with this view is that you can actually rotate it around so if you press the middle mouse button down and then move you can actually rotate the view around. Don't be scared of doing this. If you do move it around, a lot of people do it straight away, then you can just click here to take a view from the top again. And it, it basically goes back into a 2D view. Okay, so don't be scared if you do happen to move that around. It's no big deal. Now, I tend to do this and do a lot of my designs and machining in the 3D view. The reason being is that you can see the tool paths in the 3D view. You can see the actual depths that they are cutting to. So if you're cutting, let's say, something out and you're doing, let's say, three passes, you'll see all of those three passes in the view. If I were doing that in the 2D view, you wouldn't see that. You just see the one pass because it's just looking at a top view down. Okay, so I'll just switch back there and it becomes the 2D view. Okay, so this is just basically showing you what the interface looks like. 